Get Pucked. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Get Pucked podcast. So, as many of you have been probably paying attention, uh, the Stanley Cup playoffs are in full force, and we're down to the final four. Uh, Whereas, initially, uh, with Dave when he was here, the three of us uh, had a nice chart to show you where we did our picks and how things we thought were going to progress. The first round had some pretty good hits for the most part. Um, We're scrapping the second part because we were... All off. No, 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 no. We're not, we're not no, no, scrapping no. it. We got it. We scrapping it. It's awful. Here it is. It's terrible. Don't show it, please. Why'd you do this to me? All right. Well, okay. You decided to. Here it is. I called Panthers. I called it in five. It ended up being six. It's pretty close. Obviously, Dave and uh, Vito were uh, far off with Toronto. Um, Dave came strong with Carolina there in six. Uh, we both had Jersey in seven. They they unfortunately didn't make it there. Dallas, uh, I had Dallas. Actually, you know what? Nah, forget that. I, I I want this. Don't scrap nothing. Dallas and seven is exactly what it ended up being. You had Dallas and six. Dave took the Kraken, which is a fail. I really thought the Oilers were going to come in clutch. They failed it, both for me and Dave. Dave, across the board, uh, minus picking Carolina. Horrible, horrible picks. Um, but you had, uh, you had the Golden Knights. So good for you. Good for you. That said... Uh, hopefully we're going to get uh, Dave back uh, soon so that we can uh, do our, our uh, conference final picks. But what I wanted to talk to you today in particular, with the draft now being locked in with the positions, the ones that matter anyways, um, and of course we're going to kind of just, you know, we talked about the whole on our on our sort of live reaction last time about our feelings about Chicago and how that happened. I'm more curious about now pick number five. All right, hmm. let's talk about pick number five. So, I, they're not trading it. They're not trading it, right? It's not going to happen. You can come up with scenarios all you want. It's not really going to happen, right? Well, Kent Hughes said it's very unlikely that they move it, but not impossible, but very unlikely. Okay. Okay. Let's let's play in that tiny little gray area where he says it's not impossible it's very unlikely but okay let's let's play there for a second shall we rattle me off the four first picks not the teams who's going what players Bedard sure easy Fantilli yeah I think consensus too uh Leo Carlson I don't think anybody would say no um, I think Kent Hughes would push for Will Smith, but you can make a case for Matt Bimichkov. And uh, the Habs are five. Who's who's going four? You've only given me three names. Then you started talking about Kent Hughes. So I think I think I think Will Smith is. I think the Habs want Will Smith. I want Will Smith, but I think he's going to get picked ahead of Montreal. And much okay, so have to make so, a decision whether they're going to want Matt Vimichkov at five or not. Okay, so you want you're saying Will Smith is possibly in the top four there, which leaves, and this is kind of where I'm going with this. So that leaves Michkov available at five. And now this is what everybody's kind of talking about: if he's there, should they take him? Will they take him? And so I kind of have this 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 ridiculous trade scenario I want to I want to run past you. Okay, it's going to require a little bit of context and a little bit of just assumptions. So to start okay. with, if they trade five, I don't believe they trade five to go up. If five is getting traded, it's to go actually down. And here's the context to that sort of insanity that I just said. Okay, They have Arizona right after them and then they have Philadelphia. Now, I think Philadelphia is also in that kind of boat where they got the new GM, the new president of hockey ops. I think they're going to possibly, whatever it is that they do have on that team, they're going to try to blow it up and they're going to do a, a, re, uh, a rebuild. With that being said, they're going to be much further behind Montreal in the rebuild process. They might consider a guy like Michkov, who many are saying would be the second overall if you didn't have all that stuff with Russia going on and his contract. They might be like, okay, we'll 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 take a guy like him, and we'll wait the years, 
And by the time he comes, if we're confident we can get him to come over, he'll fall right into the laps of when we suspect we're going to be maybe a little bit more competitive. Now, that's a big assumption. But let's say that were the case. So Montreal starts talking to Philadelphia. And we talk about swapping five and seven. Why Why only Philadelphia, not Arizona? Why aren't you including them in, the, so, in this conversation? So... Here's the thing, right? When I think Arizona, I don't think about what Arizona necessarily has in order to make that trade happen. Falling back one spot there, in addition, you know, they're going to get a good, good player also. I'm just looking at a team like Philadelphia, and I'm saying to myself, this is a team that's primed to take a guy like Michkov. And they would like to jump ahead of Arizona because Arizona also would be a prime candidate to take a Michkov. They would be able to sit back and say, we don't have to worry about paying anybody. We don't have to worry about nothing. We got the second best player of the draft. We'll worry about this in three, four years. They might not even be in Arizona by the time he comes to that team. You know what I'm saying? So they would okay. be really primed to take Michkov, in my opinion. So the context is that Philadelphia knows that if Montreal passes on Michkov, he's likely going to Arizona. If they can get their hands on him, that might be a tremendous get for them if ultimately he does come to play in the NHL. Now they come and talk to Montreal and say, okay, you guys are, are, are a little bit skittish on Michkov. You don't necessarily want to take him. You're probably going to have to at five if he's still there. Talk to us. What can, we, what can we do? I offer you this scenario. With all that context being said, Montreal trades pick number five and a contract player for money. Let's say Hoffman. Okay. To Philadelphia for pick seven and Carter Hart. Now, in this context, we're saying that, forget Bedard, but Fantilli, Carlson, yeah. Will Smith. Yeah, and, and Bedard, obviously. Well, yeah, I said forget Bedard. So Fantilli, yeah. Carlson, and Will and Smith, Smith are taken. Are gone. Yeah, so they're that, taking that, the two, three, four. Okay. Yeah. And so that you leaves got, you us got guys like You got guys like Zach Benson. You got guys like Dvorsky. You got guys like Reinbacher still around. Uh, if if you're in the market for a defenseman, although he just got hurt, hopefully he's, it's nothing too serious. So there'd be, there'd be Benson, Leonard, Michkov, Leonard, Dvorsky. Yeah, well, yeah Michkov they're all is still the, there. Yeah, yeah. Okay. there's no doubt. Michkov is the highest uh, ceiling player out of all of that. It's just all his particulars, right? The idea behind it is that he's great. You don't know if he's coming. You feel confident he's coming. All this kind of stuff. Regardless whether you got the Russia situation or not, it's likely three years before he gets here. No matter what. No matter what. So if you're going to be rebuilding in Philly, they might be like, we'll definitely take the chance on that because we're not even going to be competitive for a couple of years. So that's that's a number one in their books. And it's likely that if Michkov gets passed on at five by Montreal, I, I really don't see a scenario where Arizona doesn't take him because that screams to me an Arizona pick. We got the second best skill player. We don't have to worry about him. We don't have to pay him for a long time. If it fizzles out, oh, well, we did the best we can for it. Like, I could just see it. They're that kind of team. No matter what, it would be perfect for them. Philadelphia, for different reasons. It would be perfect for Philadelphia in three years' time when they become competitive again. But I don't see that pick getting past Arizona. So, And with the whole thing with Carter Hart, and now he's going to be getting a little bit older by the time they start getting competitive and everything, maybe they're, they're, they're thinking about it. The only small piece that I add to this is that considering we were been talking about this a while with Sam Montembeau not being a number one and what Jake Allen, whatever, Monty's been playing pretty well for Team Canada of late. I know that doesn't necessarily change my mind. I don't know about yours, but let's just say that that's scenario. Is that an insane trade? Like absolutely insane? It, it's, it's not that it's insane. Okay, it's just that when you look at Matvey Michkov, so this is the player that we're talking about, right? When you look at his skill set and the tools that he brings, uh, offensively speaking, def his defensive game's a little bit questionable at times, but it's okay, it's fine. Uh, when you look at his offensive game versus in comparison to the other players you mentioned, it's a huge drop off. The only player that I give a little bit more credit from an offensive perspective, and just because I think he, his his game's going to transition well for the NHL, or there's a strong chance that it, that it does, is Zach Benson. Now, Zach Benson's not projected to be in the top five, um, but he's in there at that six. 
So if Montreal does drop down to, to seven, okay, it's like I'm almost crossing my fingers that they're 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 gonna land Zach Benson more than Dvorsky, more than uh, Ryan Leonard, more than than those guys. But then if we don't, and Montreal misses out on Michkov, they lost out on Will Smith because the team picked them ahead. They lose out on Benson. It's like okay, there are some still some good players there, and yeah, you are getting Carter Hart too. But let's make. There's one thing I want to make clear about Carter Hart. I have I have said in the past that I would be willing to take him, and I would be willing to take him. I really would be willing to take. He's young. He's just entering the prime of his career from a from a goaltender's perspective and all that. The thing is, is that you almost feel like you got to take the time to rebuild his confidence again, okay, to get it to a place where you can have him as your number one goalie and be confident with you with him as your number one goalie. But the, but it, it, there's it's there's this question has a lot of has a lot of value. There's going to be some people that are gonna, you know be upset if I even if I agree to this. But I would I would strongly I'd say this I'd strongly consider making that move. I'd strongly consider if it means that we get Hoffman off or Dvorak off our books while only trading down two spots. Yes, we'd be out of the top five. But this is a deep draft that has very talented players. You know, obviously, I wouldn't do this for if we were, uh, you know, three or four. No, but, no, I think I think the position plays a massive factor in this, and I'm also not suggesting. I'm I'm in agreement with you too. I think personally speaking, if you were to ask me at five, if Mishka is still there. I think you take him. I don't think you trade that pick at all. I think you take him. You roll the dice on it. The skill is too big of a factor there. I'm suggesting in this fictitious scenario, they did the homework. The Habs brass went up, down, left, right. They got Bobro uh, Bobrovsky, uh, uh, Nick Bobrov, and his whole and his whole connection over there. They know some way, somehow. They know it's just never going to materialize, and they're privy to that. Maybe Philadelphia isn't. And so with that information, they kind of say, you know what? We we could take them, Philly. We, maybe we'd be Bob, wanting if Montreal's privy to that information, Philly's privy to that information too. It's just a yeah, question of like, which know. team is willing to take the gamble. My concern about taking Michkov is that while I, while there is a chance, and you know, people are coming out saying more and more that there's a strong chance he comes to the NHL in three years from now. But if in three years from now he doesn't come to the Montreal Canadiens and Montreal lost another top five pick while gambling on a guy who, by all accounts, should be going number two if it weren't for, you know, the, the whole Russian factor and all that. Uh, if he doesn't well, come in the contract terms, also. It's going to hurt. I've said this countless times this year. This draft is extremely important for Montreal, and they need to nail it. And I just feel like while Matvey Michkov would be a fantastic get for Montreal, even if they waited three years, there's no guarantees that after three years he's going to come to the NHL. Even if he wants well, to, we don't know what's going to happen. There's too much of a big question mark. That's the only reason yeah. why we're talking about Michkov dropping to five, six, seven, or even later. I don't think he's going to get that much later, but even later is because of that. Because you have a guy that literally can be the next Kaprizov. Could be even better than Kaprizov, potentially. And, and I hear that. And it's hard and again, to pass up on that, but... I don't think you can. I don't think you can. I see you're a little bit more skittish about it too. I think you roll the dice and you figure it out down the road. I think this kid is too big of a talent to pass up on. But for that exact reason, this organization last year at the draft, you know, they went ahead when they got that first overall pick and they took Slaff over Shane Wright where everybody had Shane Wright and Shane Wright, Shane Wright. And, it, you know, they did their own due diligence and they did their own insert, uh, it, their own research. They did not take the consensus number one. So I'm not I'm fair, saying he wasn't that really the consensus number one by the time the draft came around. It was almost like split decision. Yeah, but I would imagine for the most part, you got people that were out there that are going to be, they, when that happened, people were surprised. People were like, oh my God, they, they didn't take Shane Wright. So it'd be the same situation now, sort of. Like if Michkov is there and they don't take him, like, oh, I'd be surprised, but I'd be like, they must know something. They must know something. And so with that being said, and, and it's likely, in my opinion, they're going to take him. Personally, if he's there at five, I don't think he'll be there at five. I think they're going to end up with Will Smith. That's, you know, how I kind of see this playing out. But I'm just kind of thinking, like, trying to make a trade scenario happen, right? I'm just, I'm just thinking about it. 
Now, I'm also on the fence about Carter Hart. I was a little bit higher on him earlier in the season, and I was a little bit being like, yeah, you know what? We can't be rolling Monty as a one. We need we need goaltenders. You need goaltenders on this team. And Carter Hart could have been a, another wonderful reclamation project for this organization a la Kirby Doc. Um, I, I just, to make to make that move, you're only falling two back. Yeah, you're right. Okay, so Mishkov is gone, but on purpose now. Now you're sitting at seven. Ahead of you is Arizona. They can take Benson. They can take Dvorsky. They can take Leonard. They, they can take probably, all these other guys. Would- if all those players are taken and there's Benson left at six for Arizona, they're going to take Benson. They're going to take Benson. I'd be surprised if they don't take Benson, to be honest. Okay. I really would so, so is it so bad? Again, I want to reiterate. If they're at five, I think and I hope they don't trade that pick. They got to leave this draft with Will Smith or, uh, or Mave Michkov. That said... Would it be the absolute end of the world if they left this draft with Carter Hart and Dvorsky? Would it be would it be the worst thing ever? Now you got your goalie, your you're gonna your 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 primary goalie who's gonna be battling with Monty, maybe getting the better out of him. Maybe you're able to tap into the Carter Hart that was projected to be. He's gonna be older. We know goalies take longer to get their their mojos going, and you have Dvorsky hypothetically. Okay, but you still have an issue now at this point. You got three goalies on the books. Well, they're going to move probably Jake Allen in the offseason in you're, this instance. You're assuming. Right? I, I think that there's a market for Jake Allen. I do. So, yes, he would be moved. I'm also not big on Caden Primo. I don't think that this is the future. I had hopes initially, early days, but I don't believe so anymore. So, you have to address goaltending. It must be. I don't know how you do it. I don't know if you go and find some prospect somewhere. If uh, what's his face? Uh, not. But do you what's feel his, that? What's the backup you, in uh, in uh, uh, in Nashville? As- Askarov. Is that Askarov. Askarov. Do you somehow try to make something happen there? Because obviously their goaltending, their number one goaltender, ain't going anywhere anytime soon. You would. This- you- uh, Montreal will be dropping way too far down if you're trying to make an Askarov deal. Oh, I'm not pick. saying trade your first round pick, but I'm saying let's say you you start packaging that Florida pick with with another high end prospect with another you know do you go all in and just try to grab the fifth overall and Askarov? I'll, I'll tell you this: if Kent Hughes is able to retain his fifth overall and manage to land Askarov, that's a fantastic offseason, a fantastic draft day. Okay, but it's what did he give to get Askarov? Oh, he's gonna he's gonna give. He's gonna, he's gonna have give. to give something, right? Oh, Especially give. with all yeah. the other rumors. I, I just think there's there's too many there's too many rumors out there. But again, these are hypothetical scenarios. I, 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 let me counter your your scenario, please. If you, if you don't <laughs> okay, mind. please. Okay. Well, I'm just pulling this out of thin air, by the way. There's no talks, no rumors, no nothing. I'm just coming yeah, up yeah, with yeah. something we're, for we're, the sake of coming up with we're, something. We're just we're just shooting it right there. Okay, so what if Montreal? Paid a price to just move no. up one. To move up one. To move up one. Where do you benefit? Well, where do you benefit? If Montreal, for example, really wants to target, let's say Leo Carlson instead, or they want to target, uh, they want to guarantee that they land Will Smith. If there's a player that they covet, and they're they they're worried that San Jose or Columbus might take that player. Should Montreal trade their fifth and something, something that might sting a little to get the number four or maybe even number three? Number four, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I don't think you benefit enough because your consolation prize at five, if they take... Uh, Will Smith is Mavi Michkov, and I'm perfectly cool with that. So I wouldn't do that. Move up to three? <sighs> Maybe, but even then. So, like, they're that, they got that much of, like, uh, a, 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 an interest in Carlson. Like, like that. And, and, and from what I understand, Carlson's not even a slam dunk at three. He might even be there at five. I, I think just for the sake of the curse of the three, I'd stay away. Well, okay, okay, so, <laughs> okay, so there's that. Okay, there's okay. That. No, that, that, that's a joke. Um, but but talk to me too. 
which would never happen, but talk to me too. The the cost of two, you already heard rumor is some people trying to put stuff out there. Uh, The the fifth plus Caulfield plus something else to get to two. Like, no, I'm not even looking at that. I'm not going to sacrifice that kind of a package to get the two. Even if it'd be massive. Fantilli, it'd be massive. Even if Fantilli would become like a, a star right away and change change the middle for the Montreal Canadiens right off the bat. It's just you're looking at uh, – I don't – You. it's very unlikely. You don't hear of these types of trades happening. I can't remember the last time when a team moved up to the top three because it doesn't well, happen. Well, it, it's too expensive, right? and that's so, why I don't so, talk about that. It's about going down. The only And the only reason you would go down is if the cards fell in such a way that if we're just assuming that Will Smith is their guy and he gets taken at four and Carlson is there at three, Fantilli and Bedard, you have Michkov. And because of that X factor with that player, where he would have gone to, this wouldn't have been a discussion. He w- He's ahead of Fantilli, he, he, like skill-wise. If he didn't have all of that baggage... We wouldn't be having these kind of fictitious conversations. It'd be well, all in stone at this point. Well, there, there's a chance that if this was all happening, right, that there was no uh, Russia being a factor, then you'd probably see Matt Vemichkov at two and Fantilli at three and Carlson at four. And it's like, we wouldn't be talking. It's like, it's guaranteed. Well, I will Smith well that's what I'm high. saying. So because of this right? situation you find yourself in, Montreal has the ability that if it plays out that Michkov is there at five and they're like, we're not 100% on this guy. Not that the skill isn't there, but because of all of the baggage, we just don't know if we want to get in bed with that. They have the opportunity to knock on the door of not necessarily Arizona. I mean, they could, but I can't see why Arizona would do it because Arizona's sitting there saying, well, if you guys don't take him, we're taking him. And if you do take him, ooh, consolation prize, Zach Benson. Which, again, the discrepancy in skill there, but they're also saying he might not even come. But they would be cool with it. Montreal would not be cool if this kid didn't show up in three years. That'd be a huge problem. Arizona, pff, what would they care? So it would, it's really it would be a huge problem. And whether you could spin it and rationalize it as much as you want, but if three years from now he did Montreal, let's say Montreal drafts Michkov, and then three years from now he doesn't show up, it's going to be a fail. It's going to probably be the Kent Hughes administration's biggest fail so far. Yeah, and no, and far, it's not. It's not their fault. fault. Their, oh well, except for the fact that except all, this, the, all yeah. the red flags are currently there. They can not take him. But if they don't take them and you dangle that to teams that could roll the dice, because if Philadelphia is going to blow it up and they're going to be bad for the next couple of years, they're going to get a lot of high draft picks and they're going to have good prospects coming into their into their system regardless in the next three years. If he comes, then it was a perfect gamble for them. And if he doesn't, then what did it really cost them, right? They, they rolled the dice on the second highest skilled player of the draft. And it didn't materialize for reasons beyond their control. But they are prepared to do it because they know they're going to be bad. Montreal's on the uptick. Montreal, as of next year, is not drafting in the top 10. I don't see that happening. Uh, barring a crazy season like the one that yeah. just passed with, yeah. all the injuries, with, the all super, with all the injuries. So if that's the case, if Montreal's on the uptick and they're going to start trying to make pushes now to get back in the playoff position, they, they have this opportunity. Now, is Philadelphia, Philadelphia is the, the most likely candidate to trade with? Is When I, you kind of look at the team, you're like, well, who else can you go for? They have another kid, but he's like their best prospect. Gauthier? Yeah, Cutter. I mean, no. is, like, why would they do that? I yeah, can't see them it, doing that. You, I can see them trading basically their fifth overall pick in Cutter Gauthier in, uh, in, I believe it was last year, right? Last year, I think, yeah. 2022 draft, they drafted the uh, Cutter Gauthier. Um, and the seventh overall pick in 2023 for the fifth and then and Hoffman. Like, hey, that would never work. That makes no sense. Well, the it, Hoffman part would not be a factor anymore because the Hoffman was only there to make the money kind of thing with, with a roster player that is Carter Hart, right? Just to kind of, you know, make money in and out and just swap it around, um, which would have been another benefit for Montreal to kind of get that off the books. Um, well, they're but getting yeah, it I off mean, the books, but they're just giving it to another player who's younger and, and it is more of a positional need, right? Which so, which is essentially getting it off the books, like, yeah, like you know what I'm saying. So so there that that's kind of why I thought about I thought about this, just trying to come up with like a trade scenario because I'm thinking to myself, it's it's very likely. Well, I don't know, very likely. It's it's likely. It's super possible that Michkov will be there at five. 
because all the other teams forget one and two. One and two are out of the running. Fantilli and Bedard, for sure, they're going one and two. They'll no, no, never have to... that's, why, that's why nobody brings it up, right? Those, like... No, but my point, my point is with guys like that is that they don't have to justify it. They don't have to say, oh, we didn't take him for this reason or that reason. We we took Fantilli. No one's going to bat an eye. We took Bedard. Obviously, that's well, the number okay, one. Okay, so there's there's another scenario here for if they're going to trade down, right? If the Montreal Canadiens are going to trade down and they feel like, okay, all the players that they actually really wanted at five have been taken or, you know, they don't want to go through the Matt Bay Michkov. Maybe they don't feel like Zach Benson is uh, – not that he is a player that would do well in Montreal. Uh, would be a nice spark plug on many lines. He, he's got he's got a, he's got a lot of energy um, and brings a lot of energy in his game. However, he is a bit of a smaller player. Plays a big game as a small player, but like if that's not the, then maybe they they go by based on organ, organizational need and they go take a Reinbacher and that's why they trade down at seven. And all of a sudden it's Reinbacher and Carter Hart. I wouldn't be a fan of that. So if people tune out <laughs> by the time we get, they get to this topic. I wouldn't really be a fan of that move because I strongly believe you take the best player available. Yeah, I, and I'm pretty sure that he outright said that too. I can't see him doing that. I mean, it would that would really, really blow my mind if 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 they trade down to seven and then take Reinbacher and they're like, okay, but we got the best defenseman of this and it's a need and whatever. But you pick. got these other guys he's, that he's are there. A safe pick. Reinbacher is a safe pick. He, he's basically a defenseman. A right-handed defenseman who's gonna be a top four NHL defenseman. Is yeah, he gonna be a top not, two? It's, Question it's mark. It's not good there. enough. It's not four? good enough. No, it's not. It, it's it. When you look at the season Montreal had and they had a top five pick, it's yeah. really hard to say go trade down. And I said it last episode, um, where the last time Montreal Canadiens drafted fifth, they drafted Carey Price. So I kind of like spot five more than I like spot three. But it doesn't work like that. Oh my God! Listen, all the people super, saying that if it's you're a fun. Super, if you're it's a superstitious fun. person, but right you now, can't be superstitious in sports, not in it, management. Be a superstitious player. Have all the quirks I'm you not, want. I'm not superstitious. I'm just, I'm just Ugh. saying it for the people who are. Okay, no, for the so people irritating. who are, and you look, and you look at spot number three. It hasn't uh, hasn't been good for the Montreal Canadiens. Spot number three. So, but you know what? I'll take a spot number three all day, every day, and I bet you they'll work out a lot more often than they don't. You just Montreal has very bad luck when it came to the the previous regime took a guy from an organizational need, and it was a mistake. They took KK, who I like, but he should not have been there. There was many. I mean, it really obviously should have been Brady Kachuk, but they 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 made a mistake. Go back before with the Galchenyuk year. I task you to go find anybody else that so should have gone for... three. But where was he picked? Nine. So a bunch of other teams passed on him too, man. <laughs> I'm, not mean, mistaken. I'm not mistaken. Philip Forsberg was taken I feel at like nine. He was, I feel like he was taken further down. But regardless, he's still passed on by a lot of other teams. Philip Forsberg the guys they was... took oh, three. sorry, my bad. Eleven. Okay, 11, even there. So even more so, right? It was All those other 11. teams are kicking themselves. And, uh, you know what? What am I saying? Uh, they could have taken Morgan Riley. They could have taken uh, the Hampus. Yeah, but you're Tamba, looking at it. Truba. You're looking at it. I know, it's in hindsight. Not fair. Right? Yeah, it's not a fair It's not. A they fair could have taken Tara Vinen, Andre Vasilevsky. I could keep going. I'm just saying it's silly to tell me like superstition, like, ooh, they've historically had bad third round picks or or top three picks, Uh, you know, but their their top five has been good. Well, historically, yes, it is historically. But when you look at it, okay, first off, the the Galchenik draft was was terrible because everybody in the top top three is not even playing in the NHL anymore. But just to say, it's... Listen, this draft... The last last top three picks Montreal had has not been very good. Agreed. But I feel like this Third time around, in particular, you got just about everybody saying that you are walking out of this draft in, in the fifth spot. You are getting a player that's going to probably be a superstar. Not a star, a superstar. So if that's, if that's the case, and I've heard it too, and I've looked up a lot of the players that, that are in this draft, especially in the top, call it top eight, top nine players. Um, some of which I've actually watched 
quite a bit. And I'm sorry, but even at number five, I'm not trading down. I'm and not you trading. You wouldn't be wrong. Yeah. The only way I trade down is if you blow me out of the water and like you give me something that that I have to look, pause, even more than I already did when you when you brought up this trade scenario, and I have to be like, this is it's really too hard to pass up this. I can't see anybody past Philly making you a big enough incentive to trade to past seven. I can't see that happening for Montreal. They would rather take the player at five without question. That's why Philadelphia, this weird, like, I don't know, the way I the way I saw it just to one more time with the whole context is the is the pieces of how it all fell into place. If Michkov's there at five and they don't want him for whatever reason, and you know Arizona would be a team that would grab him, but you're looking at Philly saying this would be a perfect kind of guy for you in a rebuild situation. If we swap so you get him, you got to give me something. When you look at the something to get back, you think to yourself, well, wow, Carter Hart would make a perfect 1-1 with Montembeau to finally see who would come out ahead as a, like an actual goaltender for this team. It would be, and then what are you really losing? You didn't want Michkov. So your consolation prize in that instance, we can just scan through the list fast, fast. You're likely going to get either a Benson, Dvorsky, Leonard, uh, Reinbacher, if you really want to go wild. I mean, okay, any one of those guys let's, would let's be a good about, player. Let's talk about a real wild scenario. A wild one. It, it happened uh, last draft. We saw Shane Wright drop to four, and people didn't even think yep. he was going to get past two, right? Yep. So he dropped to four. Let's say somebody like Leo Carlson does drop to Montreal. You take him. At, well, are you taking him over Will Smith? Or over Matt Vimichkov? Let's say things really get wild. So you're telling – well, hold on a second. You're telling me at five, Smith, Michkov, and and uh, Carlson are all available? Well, let's say at five, uh, we look, okay, Connor Bedard's taken. Adam Fantilli's taken. Now, all of a sudden, Columbus takes uh, Will Smith. Okay, so Smith is gone. Okay. Smith is gone, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and for whatever reason, San Jose is really into something like Zach Benson. I don't see it, guys. I don't see it. But let's say they have a decision to make with Michkov and Leo Carlson. The only reason why I'm even bringing this up is because some have even speculated that there's a possibility that Leo Carlson drops a little bit. I think it's wild. I don't know, the, the, he's such a, a well-rounded player and he's huge. I would take Leo Carlson. I would take Leo Carlson if he's there at five. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because that, I think, changes the dynamics of a lot of things. Now, all of a sudden, PLD factor, you know, you're not that much into having I'm, to get I like am, another center. I am not even going to look at the whole PLD thing. There's I, already well, it all It all factors in. Michkov's no, a winger, I get it. which is great. But that's, you're still, I mean, your centers are good, but they can be better. Carlson makes your team better. That is a big boy. I think he's like 6'3 or 6'4, 2'10 or, or something. This is Almost a big dude, man. Like, like with a big skill set. If he's there and you got Michkov there, you can literally say, forget the safe play. Like Carlson was projected to be three. Yes, absolutely. I'm going to take Leo Carlson. The and reason why I'm bringing away this up, from that bank. The reason why I'm even bringing this up is because Bob McKenzie's latest draft list has Will Smith at three. Okay. That that's why I uh, Smith I at three, up. Carlson at four, or flip flop them makes no difference to the scenario. I still think that in a crazy world, you're going to have Mave Michkov at five. He's going to be there. And the question is whether or not Montreal is going to pull the trigger on this and be like, we'll wait the three years the whole, and hope to God that the whole thing in Russia is going to start to sort itself out soon. And we all hope that it does too. And that it just becomes a hockey thing. Let him, let him so, either find a way out of his contract or let the contract end and come like uh, Kaprizov. And, so and this guy is supposed to be better. Because we're gonna we're gonna have a, a an episode completely focused on the on the draft coming probably next week uh, or sometime soon. Um, Bob McKenzie's draft list. He's got obviously Bedard at one, Fantilli at two, uh, Will Smith at three, as I okay. said. Yeah. yeah. Leo Carlson at four and Michkov at five. Yeah. With Dvorsky at six, Leonard at seven, and Zach Benson at eight. And the only reason 
why Michkov is going down to five is because of the, the whole Russian factor. Yes. And not yes. because he's Russian, it's because of what's going on in Russia. Yes. But that's what I'm saying. The, the I, really- I, I, honestly, I, I honestly want Will Smith. I know he's a bit more of a safer choice because of the whole, um, uh, you know, that he's, he's committed, he's committed to, to university next year, to college uh, hockey next year. But you saw that uh, Kent Hughes coached him. There's a link there. He knows what he's getting. We've seen what Will Smith has been doing. Um, I just think he's the right pick for the Montreal Canadiens. And his offensive game is just very is something it's very desirable and just a perfect fit for Montreal. I don't think I, I just don't, think don't anybody know gets upset now that pick. Yep. with all the hype that's happening around Will Smith. I just don't know if now he's going to make it to five. And if he doesn't make it to five, and Michkov just happens to land on uh, in Montreal's laps, and then they probably have to take Michkov and take that gamble. I think so. And if in three years from now. He doesn't come to Montreal because, you know, whatever reason, and it just, you know, they just can't make it here. It's going to suck. It's really going to hurt Montreal. Yeah, it's going to suck big time. Unfortunately, you're going to look and say Montreal gambled and lost again. Yeah. But I believe it's a reasonable gamble to take because the upside is that high. But again, I'm only saying this if Will Smith is taken. And if there was no chance of getting Leo Carlson and all that, then you have to basically make a decision between Michkov, Benson, Dvorsky, Ryan Bacher, Ryan Leonard, and Oliver Moore. If you have to make a decision on those, I'm going to take the highest talented kid out of that, and that's Michkov. So, so here's a final thought for you. For some sick reason, both Will Smith and Michkov are available at five. Who do you take? Who the heck jumped up for that to happen? I d- who knows? Let's say it happened. If those two guys are available at five, what do you do? Thinking. Thinking. Yeah, thinking. <laughs> My first reaction is try to maximize as much as you can and trade down with one pick to Arizona and just get something. It's not going to happen. I, I, honestly, people might call me crazy on this, uh, but uh, I'm sure a lot of you would understand. I'd probably go with Will Smith. And you want to know why? Because of what you described before. Montreal is getting closer to the next uh, to the next level of the rebuild. Will Smith has 90 to 100 point potential in him. Now, whether that actually happens or not, we don't know. But he's got that kind of potential to Montreal Canadiens. And I think under Marte St. Louis, he can achieve that. Um, and I just think that we'd be getting an impact star player right away anyway. And we'd be getting them, getting them in a year from now rather than three or four. And you know what? That's super fair. That's super fair. And and what I would ask now is for for those that made it all the way all the way to the end, we'll we'll possibly try to write this out too in the description just to see, or maybe on our Twitter you can catch it there too. Our two questions are this: If for some reason Will Smith and Mavi Michkov are available at five, who would you take? And for the crazy unrealistic trade scenario that we propose in this instance, would you do it? Who would win that trade? Would Montreal win? Would Philadelphia win? Is it a push? Is it a perfect hockey trade? Or absolutely not? We're all completely Why don't you, why don't you re- recap the trade quickly? The, again, with all the context, and I'm, if you've made it this far, you've heard me say it two or three times now, but all the context with where it's situated, the players, the Arizona sitting in the middle, it would be Montreal trading the fifth round, a uh, fifth overall pick, and... Um, Mike Hoffman. Mike Hoffman for the seventh and Carter Hart. So we're they would take uh, they would take on Hoffman. Obviously, Carter Hart's the the better player there. Yeah. Uh, it's just be, it's the incentive to go from seven to five. Yeah, they're they're guaranteeing themselves to grab Michkov because that makes the most sense for them, and their positive Arizona is going to grab him if he's there at at six. So for those who are watching and listening, would you do that? Would you make that trade? Would you let us know? Let us know. We'd be super curious, and uh, and I think, like you said, we're gonna have a um, a recap, uh, and we're gonna go through the top potential picks of the draft that's coming up. Give our assessments of them all. You've heard quite a bit about them today, but we're gonna go a little bit deeper and see what some of the other guys who can make a surprise jump later on. Um, but and so keep keep it up before 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 you end this. I want whoever's listening, and whoever ends up watching this. 
If you don't agree with that Philadelphia trade scenario, again, it's a scenario. We're not saying that it'll happen. We have no inside track. It won't happen. Let, let, it won't happen. But let us let us know what it would take or what it would cost for you for Montreal to drop to, uh, uh, two spots or what you would be willing to trade to move up two spots. You sick man. Not moving up. <laughs> Get that out of your mind. All right. So we're ending it there. Thanks very much, everybody. Again, like, subscribe, the whole nine yards. You know the whole drill. Uh, we really appreciate everybody with all the comments, leaving the likes, uh, dislikes. If you hate us, that's fine too. We, we, we welcome it all. Appreciate you for taking the time and listening to us talk about crazy nonsensical trades. So for Vito, I'm Matt. Catch you next time. This was Get Pucked.